got in last night around 11.45. DK hunting. It's the afternoon hunt of October 30th. We climbed down for a little bit <clears throat> to go get a bite to eat and go out to the, the fin, get some doe pee, um, some other things for, for hunting this week here. So we got the lucky bandana on tonight because it's a little warm out. It's probably 60 degrees right now. Unfortunately, that's not even the highest it's going to get this week. It's going to be up like 67, 68 some days. So, we've also got a terrible glare of sun right there. So, we're out here early. It's like 3.15. I got Matt like 100 yards behind me. Set up on this field edge tonight, hoping to catch deer coming off of uh, food to bedding or bedding to food. Depends on really where they come out and what time they want to go back to bedding. So, good chance we get them on the way from bedding to food. So, I think that we're going to try to shoot a doe tonight if we can. Maybe both of us kill a doe. Get one under the belt for the week and uh, go from there. So, I'm going to hop off of here. Hopefully, lay down some footage for you guys tonight again. Saw some here this morning. Three, three different bucks this morning. So, had a fairly interesting morning. Matt had a pretty good morning, saw a shooter, um, and had some pretty good activity up until around 11 or so. So, um, hopefully, we get the same thing tonight. Just takes one hot doe to come through here and, and change the whole game. So, starting tomorrow, we'll be sitting all day. Halloween. So, hopefully, try to kill a Halloween buck. So, I'm not sure. I think we're going to go pretty deep in the timber tomorrow. Um, get down into where it's cool, get by some water maybe. Um, see what we can't see so we'll sit tight here for about four hours and hopefully something gets on their feet here soon and we have some good activity tonight but stay tuned here we'll see what we can't see
best DK honey. <clears throat> it's happy, uh, it's happy Halloween today. Happy Halloween. Um, we're sitting all day. One of my biggest goals is to kill a Halloween buck, so we're gonna grind it out all day. We got the, uh, the lunch pail up here with us. Uh, we hiked all the way up into the furthest stand, deepest into the property we could get. It was rainy last night. Um, so I wanted to be in the woods because I figured the deer were going to have to be on their feet moving around, freshening scrapes and whatnot. So there's this trail right next to me. It's got three scrapes on it when I walked by it this morning. So that's about 150 yards to my northwest. Um, we've already seen three or four different bucks this morning. Just one and a half, two and a half yards. So it could get interesting up here once these uh, big boys get up and start to check these scrapes. So you got to be on your toes up here because these deer come in quick. And with the rain, it is, it's quiet. So I had deer walk by me this morning and it was... It was absolutely like they weren't even there. Like they're just floating like ghosts on Halloween. So, um, we're gonna sit tight here and might uh, kick back and relax a little bit. Wait for some action to pick up here, but uh, hopefully be able to bring you guys some some activity today. Grandpa's out, Dad's out. We're all spread across the farm pretty well, so we will uh, we'll see what we can't do today. So hopefully lay down a Halloween book. Four, two, three, four. Hey, that would all be great. So we're gonna hang tight here for well about the next ten and a half, eleven hours. So got the portable phone charger and a bunch of a uh, bunch of word games to play. <laughs> so all right, guys, stay tuned here. Hopefully, be able to bring you some footage later. Give you guys a <clears throat> midday update here. It's 11:30, so close enough. We had, uh, like I said, three or four different bucks this morning come through. After that, we had some turkeys, and I actually have a full turkey tag. And I need to get revenge on my gobblers because I did not get one this spring. So they uh, they kind of split the difference between me and Matt. I had him like 55 yards with which a bow and a turkey. That's just not going to happen. Um, so hopefully they're going to come back through when they come to roost tonight. <clears throat> but uh, we got about five little Debbies. So we're feeling good. I was actually getting one out. Didn't get any footage of it. <clears throat> I had a, uh, I don't know if he was a five or a six point walk right under the stand. Um, I'm just crawling in my lunch box behind me and I turn around and he's 10 yards behind the tree so with the rain we got last night and a little bit we just got a few minutes ago I mean it is quiet in here you cannot hear these deer anywhere you gotta see them but 
a lot of leaves are coming off. There's there's leaves falling everywhere every time we get a gust of wind. Um, <clears throat> so the woods looks good. It looks really good. I'm ready to let the Matthews eat a buck. I mean, I'm telling you, we're up in the thick of it. I mean, we could have a buck cruise through any day, any time here, any day. So. I think the plan is to hunt this woods pretty hard for the next four or five days. Um, we might switch it up a little bit if they cut corn, shell corn. Um, but that's not going to be until Wednesday or Thursday, I would say. Um, once that happens, I'll probably get on a, on a field edge for the, for the evenings. But... Uh, Another squirrel. Squirrels everywhere in here. Need to do some squirrel hunting, apparently. But, um, yeah, um, we actually even thought about trying to hang another stand in here, down this ridge a little bit. <clears throat> All these deer travel down that ridge. <clears throat> and you just, if you'd have a, <clears throat> if you'd have a stand over there, it'd be great. But, uh, we're going to sit tight here. we got, like, seven more hours so we're gonna sit tight here um just keep waiting them i mean it's a waiting game so you gotta be in the woods this time of year so you gotta be in the woods if you're not in the woods you're not gonna kill them <clears throat> so we're gonna just sit here and continue to do this all week and weekend and then I gotta go back to work next week, of course. It'll be in like the 20s and 30s, high in the high 40s, low 50s. So basically the complete opposite of this week. It's high in the 60s this week, maybe even 70 a day, and like 45 at night. So the mornings are still gonna be nice, but. Well, we're gonna sit back down here, get nestled in for the afternoon here, maybe catch a midday buck, coming to check some of these scrapes along this trail, and see what uh see what happens here the rest of the day so yep that's about it well it's about 12.05 now about 10 minutes ago splits ran through which is our number one hit lister that we have on camera obviously there's a lot of ground up here so we can't get every buck on camera um he ran past grandpa who's 400 yards away, couldn't get him to stop. He ran past Matt, couldn't get him to stop, and he ran by me right here at seven yards and wouldn't stop. Headed off into the neighbors. The wind is blowing from the neighbors, so odds are smelling a hot dough over there. Um, there is a scrape over here. I just jumped down about 10 minutes after he ran through to make sure he didn't double back. Um, and I put out doe urine on that scrape. I found it here this morning when I was sitting in the stand, so. Unfortunate, but at least nobody missed him and or wounded him. Um, this is why you sit all day when it gets to be the end of October, beginning of November. It's 62 degrees and these deer are seeking, chasing. Um, I can what if all day, but if it's so wet that I couldn't hear him coming from behind me, if I could have heard him, I might have been able to get around and get a shot and get him stopped in a decent time. But by the time he was past me, he was already decided that he was going to go. So oftentimes those deer go over on the other property and they come back with a doe. So we're just going to have to sit tight here. That's not the only shooter buck in here either. So. If he's up, others are up. So we just got to be patient here. and This might be where we're at the uh, the rest of the week. So might have to make it home up here. But no, I don't think anybody got a film of him. Um, he come in so fast that by the time I grabbed the bow and turned around to get the camera on, it was he was already on the other on the other property. And by that point in time, I was more worried about grabbing a grunt tube and trying to get him back, but wasn't having it. So. It is what it is. These things happen. Hopefully we can actually get some footage for him, of him for you guys. And then uh, hopefully a kill with him. He's a good deer. He's got a 
big split G2 on his left side. Just massive, massive deer, just thick all the way through his tines. Be a great deer to shoot. Probably go mid 150s. Um, just a spectacular deer. So, um, the kind that Ohio kind of is known for those thick, massive deer, you know. Um, but like I said, there's more than one shooter in here, so we're gonna keep hunting here and sit the rest of the day. And this is why you sit all day. It's 11:50 is when he come through here, so most people are already in the house eating a bowl of soup and taking a nap. Eat little debbies and stay out here. You get to kill deer. <laughs> but all right, guys, we're gonna sit back down here and figure out a. Figure out uh, what the game plan is here for the rest of the day. If we're going to move spots or if we're going to stay here, I'd imagine we're going to stay here. But maybe transition to food edge tonight. But uh, we'll have to see what happens here the rest of the day. So you guys uh, stay tuned here and we'll see what else we see. guys it's Corey with SDK hunting it is the afternoon of November 2nd it's got the bandana on it's warm again um, we're in here in a new set tonight on this pasture field that I've had a lot of bucks coming to in the evening to check this mock scrape out here um, this morning was fairly uneventful it was pretty foggy um, saw a doe at like 11.30 and then a small six point at like uh, maybe noon or so. Um, on the way in this morning we actually bumped splits um, off the driveway about 800 yards from right here and then he was up on a camera all the way up in the corner of this woods right in here um, checking a scrape at 8.45 so I honestly don't know where he's at right now, or where he could be, uh, anywhere, I guess. But, uh, I've been in for about an hour. I couldn't get the camera gear set up, because I had a button buck come in, like, as soon as I got in the stand and bed down at, like, 50 yards. So, I waited for him to clear out to get the camera rolling. But, uh, oh, it's probably 2-something now, 2.15. 214 so pretty close there um, so we've got a good four hours until 
prime, prime, prime time, but uh, we're going to just sit it out here, and we've been out all day. We went inside uh, to the house for 10 minutes just to shed clothes and switch spots, but um, other than that, we've been grinding it out, so we'll sit tight here and see if anything doesn't get chased through this valley here behind me, and uh, I don't expect to see anything out in this um, field until later this evening, so... We're just going to sit tight and see what happens here. This is a new set, so I'm kind of excited. It's not the most comfortable, so I might need to do some work on that. But other than that, we're just going to hang out and see what we see here. So we're halfway through the week now. we got another good two days of hunting here, Thursday and Friday. But whew, it's catching up to me. <laughs> These all-day hunts, so we might, uh, might shut our eyes here for just a little bit and see what uh see what we can get from that but hopefully we'll bring guests some action tonight wilson's just matt's just up there about 250 yards in a new spot that i hung it's pretty good there so um, hopefully we'll put something down tonight i'll probably shoot a doe tonight so there's a lot of stuff fair game tonight i guess but you guys stay tuned and we'll see what happens Meh. Come on. Go now. Baby. Come on. Alright guys, I'm getting out of the stand. Corey just shot a monster and it's a great story I'm sure we'll get into it but I'm gonna, right now I'm gonna walk down and uh, meet up with him and then probably go find his deer all right guys stay tuned lucky bandana baby <laughs> and you wanted to move sands I know, and they're cutting that, they're selling that corn. Dead deer. I just walked that on him, he's done, he's done. Dead standing right over him. I gotta figure out how you guys are gonna be able to get over here though. He died in the center pasture, you'll have to. Yeah, yep, yep. Okay, well we're gonna get on the blood trail here and still follow that, so. All right. Yes, he's dead. Dad's over there, but you can still learn from a blood trail, Mom. All right. Good luck. It's like a three ring circus calling people when you shoot a deer, man. Yeah. I don't even care about the lunchbox anymore. Threw that down. <laughs> this bandana, this bandana is sweet. <laughs> Yeah, I did not think he he moved fast. Dead deer, grandpa. Okay, we're on the north side of the center ravine. 
looking at the pastures where we always want to hang a stand on the north side of that center ravine. Yeah, yeah. North of the 22 foot stand that we put up. Yep, okay. Shooter. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Alrighty. Sounds good. Yep, buddy. Right here, dude. So I saw him when you texted me and said yeah. that said that he was with you. I started looking up there and I saw him come down the the uh, woods there on the along the pasture and I lost him. And then I look back over there like five minutes later and I see him in the pasture field. And I'm mm -hmm. like Yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh. And he's he's like angling like he's gonna come like 80, 90 yards out in front of me in the pasture. And I turn, and then he turns, and I just, I hear him jump the fence, and he's in the woods, and I'm like, uh-oh. I was like, I wasn't planning on. When you lost him. I wasn't him. planning on in the woods. So, I, I mean, I turned around. I had to shoot over the camera arm, around my backpack, and he got to right here, and I I wanted to stop him, and I tried. You know, I gave him a little, and <clears throat> as soon as I did that, he was like, <laughs> yeah. you know, and I was like, oh, okay, I got to shoot. I don't know if that's in <laughs> focus, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. that was for splits and that was given to splits. Yeah, that's sweet. <laughs> I got that focus. Oh, man. I'm telling you what, whenever he was at 30 yards and he finally left our head this way, my fucking heart sank. Well, I was thinking, I was just sitting here and I'm like, maybe we should go hang a stand at midnight tonight over that mock scrape that we did because he's going there almost like clockwork. Mm -hmm. But then he tore, I don't even, I, mean, I know so much, he, he tore off over here, and you can see kind of where he took the break, he started heading down this way. Some blood. What's up? There's some blood. This weekend and this week. Oh my god. You gotta put Trace Carhart on. <laughs> What a brute. <laughs> oh. what, a, what, a, what a brute. <laughs> yeah. That's splits. With, I don't know, do you call that a drop tine or what? Do you, I mean, oh, he smells, I mean, ruddy. This deer has been. 
Well, it's we've dead. seen this deer three times now, right? No, four times in the past 48 hours. Saw him the morning, well, midday of, yeah. of um, Monday. 800 yards, 900 yards from right here. We saw him Monday more, evening, yeah. same spot. We saw him, we didn't see him Tuesday. And then we saw him Wednesday, this Today, morning, yeah. driving in, tending a doe, just, uh, again, 750, 800 yards away. Well, he was with another doe when I saw him. Yep. And then he's way back over on a mock scrape that he's been hitting all summer, and all, well, all early fall, I guess. Still felt like summer half the time he was on it. But I've watched this deer since July, August time frame, another 800 yards away. Called him splits for that split right there and wanted to watch this all all season to see what that turned into that's a cool little point there but i mean just a behemoth deer it's not going to be my highest scoring deer but it's going to be one of those ones that is special because you set your mind to shooting a single deer and this deer ran by me at five yards on monday and then 10 yards today and 10 yards was just a little too much for him i guess so he didn't tote that schwacker very far. It was a little far, a little far back and a little high. Um, but he came in quick, so we have to make the best of what we what we're given here. So the new Matthews V3 doesn't have a miss in it yet. That thing is a sweet shooting bow. So <laughs> I'm tickled with it. This whole week of hunting is, you know, Matt's up from Arkansas and Dad's from home from Tennessee and. I just, I couldn't be, I couldn't be any happier. Oh, come, come look at this. Like get into it. An, like an injury, like you got. Mm. Wonder if that's what I was smelling. It's like a, looks like a tine injury maybe or something. I don't know. Well, maybe you got in a fight. Hopefully that meat's okay. Hopefully that didn't affect the meat, but yeah. Boy, what a good deer. What a good deer. Oh. Oh. All right, this sign is, us off. This whole season was dedicated to Molstad, and I've been talking to him all week and just asking him to send me and Matt a deer. I'm telling you, I swear that he's been sending this one a little too close. <laughs> yeah. Just playing with us. Just absolutely playing with us, but I think today I got home a little too much to let me have one. So this one's for you, buddy. Love you, miss you. It's hard to believe it's already been almost a year, but we appreciate this deer, buddy. And thank you, God, for the opportunity to be able to hunt these animals and everybody involved that allows me to hunt here on the farm. You know, Mike, thank you for letting us hunt here and letting my buddy come here and hunt. Heck yeah, I appreciate it. You know, this is this is this is the best moment uh, of of any given year for me is to this whole adrenaline rush of shooting a buck and and getting my hands on them and and finally being able to close a another season on on bucks. So this is four seasons in a row that I've shot a buck now, um, and my ninth overall. So next year we're going for double digits. So after after next year I won't be able to do nine, ten. We'll have to start doing 11s or something that thing's neck is huge yes this deer this deer is in full rut this deer has been moving miles and miles and miles um <laughs> over the last few days so oh. all righty guys well we're gonna it's warm out it's i'm wearing a bandana it's <laughs> it's every bit of 65 degrees and I didn't put the best shot on this deer, so we're gonna take him, get him taken care of here while we still got light um, before he gets too warm, and uh, we'll we'll probably get him out for some from some good pictures here tomorrow morning. It'll be cold overnight, so we're probably just gonna let him hang, and tomorrow morning we'll get some good pictures of him here. So, thank you guys for watching, and we still got three four days of hunting left, so hopefully we can start laying down some does for you on my end. Matt still got buck tag. Dad still got buck tag. Grandpa got buck tag. So, and I'm, corn's coming off. Yep, corn is starting to come off. So, again, I'm the first one tagged out. <laughs> so we're just gonna. 
I'm going to be the scout guy and, and the doe patrol guy. But uh, thank you guys for watching. As always, like, share, subscribe. Let us know what you guys want to see. But this is this is my first buck kill on camera, and it is it's tenfold rewarding from just killing a normal buck on, on a normal day without laying it down on footage. So we'll have that coming here for you guys here shortly, and hopefully you guys like it. Thanks for watching.